Well, welcome to today's podcast replay from the Killer Bee Studios. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Our guest, Kevin Eikenberry, is joining us, and we're going to be talking about making questions a superpower. Mm-hmm. Now, how many, how many of you are good at asking questions, would you guys say? How many of you would say you're good at asking questions? How many of you are good at, okay, so I see so. some hands. How many of you with throwing some confetti would say you're really good at giving answers? Like, I think, like, yeah, okay, I see some confetti, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I get it. I mean, we we have so many answers we can give, but uh, I love the thoughts of asking uh, better questions. And when I was talking to Kevin and he had he was talking about actually making questions a superpower, it really intrigued me to to come and talk about that. Mm-hmm. So, Mrs. Killer B, I would love to know, you know, for yourself, do you ever feel intimidated to ask questions? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, as I was thinking through what we were going to talk about today, I thought, you know, I'm sad to say it, but the truth is there's a lot of times where I'll hold back from asking a question I really want to ask because I'm afraid it'll sound stupid or, you know, I'm afraid that there's a real obvious answer that I just haven't noticed and that, you know, it's going to look ridiculous if I ask. So, yeah. And especially like if somebody just intimidates me. I mean, Mm. you know, that happens sometimes where I'll think, oh gosh, like this person is so smart or so cool or whatever that I just will stay quiet. And I don't want to be that way. So I'm really looking forward to talking to Kevin and finding out, you know, um, some more about being a good question asker. I want to be a good question asker. Well, that's, I think how many of you can relate to that? Does anybody else feel intimidated or feel like Maybe you're afraid of asking a stupid question. Yeah, I see the hands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I agree. I feel the same way at times. And at sometimes I feel like I've noticed that sometimes people um, find it uncomfortable when someone does ask them a question, like it's threatening to them as well. Like, mm, you know, yeah. especially mm-hmm. somebody in a leadership role might find it threatening. Like, wait a minute, why are you asking that question? Should you really ask that question? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes questioning asking questions is kind of looked down upon. So that's why I was really Sometimes, intrigued about yeah. him coming and talking about this. So, all right. So, okay, guys, listen, now Kevin is new to the metaverse. He's new. So, you know, he's learning about the emojis, the confetti, uh, <laughs> you know, we've had some people that are new that come leaping over furniture. And I'm like, Whoa, where did you get all this uh, superpower, super energy from? Uh, I don't know what he's going to do when he comes out, but what I would like to ask you guys to do is let's please rain him with some confetti when we bring him out. To kind of give him that metaverse welcome. And with that, could you guys please cue the guest intro? Let's go ahead and bring out our guest, Kevin Eikenberry, all the way from Indianapolis. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Kevin, welcome. We're so happy you're here. I have no idea how to jump, so I just (laughs) came in. I don't know how either. Yes, thank you for being here. I didn't ask the question about jumping. That wasn't a question that I thought to ask. (laughs) So, yeah, we're like we're not training for an obstacle course, so we're trying to keep everybody grounded. Uh, no I can't, button on that. Don't you remember? I can't hit the button. There it is. <laughs> trying to keep done. everybody grounded. So, all right. Thank you, thank you, Sound Man. Thank you, producer. Uh, no, well, we're you did an amazing job walking out here. We've had mm-hmm. you know, Kevin. We had one guy that came and he had the headset on. And he said, "I just want to let you know, I feel really nauseous." I'm like, "All right, cool." Let's get you back to just sit. <laughs> oh, well, cool. I feel nauseous. Yeah. No. Did you know what he did? Oh, yeah. You know, he did. We brought him out and he's like leaping over the furniture. He's like high energy. I'm like, whoa, dude, you need to calm down. Like you're going to get sick. <laughs> let's, let's ease it up a little bit. Like I did not expect that from someone saying I feel nauseous. Yeah. Uh, but, but I'm glad you're, I'm glad you joined us tonight. I'm so glad you're here. I am pleased and honored to be with you all. Awesome. Well, Kevin, I know, you know, some of these people here, maybe probably a lot of people here don't know who you are. Like they're learning who we are too. So I would love for you to take 30 seconds to tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do. Sure. Uh, So uh, I own a company called the Kevin Eikenberry Group. It's quite the creative name. And um, (laughs) we are in, in the leadership development business. And we've been helping leaders around the world for a very long time. This fall will be 30 years. And uh, oh. the last time I counted, I've worked with leaders from 53 countries. And as you mentioned, wow. a couple of the things we do, I do have a podcast called the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. And so it's really for anyone who's a leader or a, um, a future leader to, to become more effective, mm-hmm. both personally and professionally. And uh, that's kind of how we got connected, yes. uh, Mr. Killer B. And um, 
so that's that's the short version. I've been I've been working with leaders and writing books and doing and leading a team for thirty years. Wow. wow. And then you've got some books. What what are your books? And I've I've seen some of those on LinkedIn and stuff. So would you mind to share what are some of the titles of the books you have? Yeah. So the last three are all about working at a distance. So uh, the long distance leader came out in 2018 before the pandemic. Um, and then during the pandemic, the long distance teammate came out. And then this spring or this winter, actually, the long distance team. Those are the last three, but I've written a bunch of other stuff, too. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. How, can, now, how can they find your book? Like, can they get it on Amazon? And Yeah, uh, and, and all the stuff's on Amazon, or you can go to kevineikenberry.com uh, and find everything. But uh, if you can figure out how to spell my name, everybody, um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty easy there. to find. You know, yeah, you're, you're well past halfway there. Uh, before we start, Kevin, I would like to ask you, can you explain why why asking questions can be a superpower? Well, questions are a superpower for us. I mean, obviously, a lot of our, our work is in, is working with leaders and in, in organizations, but uh, in any part of our life, um, it's a superpower because I'll just give you a short list. Number one is it's one of the best ways for us to learn. Uh, number two, it's one of the best ways for us to build relationships and build trust with others. So if we just took those two things and said, hey, what could if I could get if I could be a more effective learner and if I could be better at building relationships with others and build trust with others, um, would that be something I'd want to learn? And I think all of us would say for sure. So I was listening in the, in the background, right? I don't think you could all could see me when, until you brought me out. Right. Uh, but yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Killer B, when you said you're, you're, you know, sometimes you're um, reticent to ask the question, you're afraid to yeah. ask the question. I don't really want to use the word afraid, but, but you, sure. you know, are, are hesitant to do that. And, you know, I, I think, that word trust is such a huge piece of that, right? Because I'm guessing you don't you don't feel that way with people that you have really strong no. and deep relationships with. It's with exactly. others. Like, what are are they going to judge me? How are how are they going to see me? And those sorts of things, yeah. right? So, um, it, it's an it's an upward spiral, right? When mm-hmm. we can figure out how to use questions as a way to build trust, and then as trust is built, it gets easier to do that, mm-hmm. and lots of other things too, of course. If I could just ask you to go a little deeper with that, because that was the main question I wanted to ask you as well was about what, how do you get over that fear? And you are hesitant to say the word, but I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with saying like, sometimes I'm actually afraid to ask a certain question. And you know, there are a lot of hot button topics these days. And I think like, oh, well, what if my question is like offensive or, you know, what if I, uh, you know, frustrate people by my lack of knowledge. And so how do you suggest um, that people get over that fear of asking questions? Because I want to be a lifelong learner. You know, I want to, I love that term you said, spiral upward. You know, I like that. And so what what are your thoughts about that? So uh, I, I think the, the the biggest thing I would say about that is that um, well, I'll start here. Uh, as a leader, sometimes I'll ask a question of a, of my team or of, of anyone, and it's pretty clear almost immediately that it's being misinterpreted, right? Like, oh, oh and you know, like the the my intention in the question is is being misinterpreted, right? So then I'll say, well, time out. Let me ask it a different way. So yeah. my point there is that when 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 we receive a question, like when I received your question just now, I I knew what the intent or I was pretty sure I knew what the intent was in it, that it was open and et cetera. And so um, one of the things that we can do, if we're afraid to ask the question, or we're not sure if, if it's the right time for us that question, ask that question is to just sort of frame it with our intention. Right. Mm. So, Hey, here's why I'm, I want to ask you a question. I want to make sure it's not misinterpreted. Here's why I'm asking. Mm, And so it it sets the table for you to feel less judged or run the risk of being judged sure, in right. that situation. So um, I think that when we can, when we can work hard to make sure that our intention in our question is pure and effective, yeah. then uh, there's much less risk in asking the question. Oh, from that's the good. Perspective I like that. of the other person. Can, do you have a story or an experience from when you've asked a question and it made a difference in your life or in your work environment? Do you have a story that you can share with us? Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Hey, this is Brian. I just want to hit pause for just a second and give a big shout out and thank you to all of you who have supported our Metaverse podcast experience. Season four of the podcast will begin in March of 2024. While we gear up for the new season, I want to invite you to join our Discord community at discord.killerbstudios.com or click the link in the show notes. It's a perfect place to keep the conversations flowing and stay connected between seasons. I hope to catch you there. And with that, let's get back to the episode. Mm, well, there's there's probably plenty. Um, we have but I, I we have like forty minutes, so <laughs> yeah, <I'm> so, <laughs> no. yeah. But but it's not real cool for Kevin to go you know go quiet for the next seven minutes while he thinks of a question uh, or of, of a story. So uh, th- there's a hundred times that I can think of where asking a question changed uh, my life, and I, I I think I'm gonna. I'm going to use a time when my dad asked a question of me. Ooh, How about that? Okay. Yeah, so I, that. Um, I grew up on a farm in Michigan and um, neither of my parents went to college, but it was always expected that my sister and I would, and I'm the oldest. And uh, I, I'm having a little trouble with my thing here. Okay. So, uh, so I was a sophomore or junior in high school and dad said, so where do you want to go to school? And I said, I want to go to the best college of agriculture in the country. Um, and he said, where is that? And I said, I don't know. He said, when, then we will find out. So the Mm. obvious thing would have been to go to Michigan state. It's, it's, you know, it's home. And I mean, it's not close, but it's the state and it's the state university for agriculture, et cetera. Mm. Um, but, uh, I chose to go to Purdue in in part because of that question. And then, uh, Mm. four years, well, it would be like probably five and a half years after, after the question, uh, I was honored to be. Uh, the student commencement speaker Aww. at Purdue Aww. and uh, and was able to tell that story as a part Aww. of my commence- wow. commencement address. Mm. So that's now um, awesome. Purdue is in Indiana, right? It is in Indiana. Okay. So I suppose that's in part why I'm in Indiana now. Sure. Uh, my wife is from Indiana. We met at Purdue. So, yeah. Well, awesome. I guess well, asking her to marry me is a pretty good question. Yeah. That's oh, yes. Very good. Very good. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so a great true. question. That's good. <laughs> All right. So, okay, we're going to get to the point of superpowers. Like, okay, how many people here would like to be better at asking questions? Because mm, I think, like, okay, okay, yeah. And, and me too. Like, this is something like this is. <gasps> This is you a jumped. work in, in progress. That's for sure. Like I've been working on it for a year and I'm still not good at it. And I think that what I look at at the world today is people are very quick at giving answers, but I'm like trying to, like, I feel like it's a skill that we've kind mm-hmm. of stepped away from because technology has made it where we can find answers very quickly. But asking better questions is something I've been trying to really learn and wrap my mind around. Kevin, share with us. How can we make questions a superpower? We've talked a little bit about why it is a superpower, right? That it can help us in so many ways. And and we could make a longer list, but we just want to talk about relationships and trust and learning would be two. So, uh, so let's sort of, since I am in real life, I'm sitting on a chair and in here, I'm sort of sitting on a couch. Uh, so let's use the acronym of CHAIR yeah. to talk about how questions are a superpower. So C, uh, in order for us to make our questions great, the first thing we must do is be curious, mm. right? Like, so think about it. Why would you ask a question if you already had an answer? Mm. right mm. there'd be no re- there'd be no reason to be afraid in fact you said the reason that you are sometimes fearful of asking is you don't want to look like you're asking something that's stupid yeah. right or right. that everyone already would know so yeah. the reality is if we want to ask better questions if we want to make questions our superpower the first thing we have to do is we must be more curious because until we're curious we're not going to ask we're yeah. just not yeah. Right. And so then, uh, so let's just do this. And, and so then let's tie that to learning for example, for example, second. So, yeah. um, who are the best as humans, who are the best learners as a group? Children, children. children. Right. Yeah. And so what's, what's their go-to question? Why? <laughs> why? Why yeah. is the question of curiosity? Right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, 
we become better learners when we're more curious and mm-hmm. we can take that as an example, uh, as mm-hmm. a really solid example. Uh, but when we are curious, and so I can be curious for, you know, I can ask Alexa a question, right? right. Because I'm curious yeah. because I don't know how old somebody is, for example. Yeah, sure. Alexa, um, how old is Kevin Eikenberry? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> no, it'll tell you. Um, it'll actually, it'll right tell now. you. Um, uh, it actually it, just it, said you passed away on Monday. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. Okay. So now we're talking about Alexa, not chat GPT. That's a whole different thing. Right. So we'll get to chat GPT before we're done. Actually. Yes, absolutely. So, so being curious is, is critical, right? So we can be curious because we, we want a, a a simple answer to something, Mm -hmm. right. A Mm -hmm. fact, right. And that's a way of being curious, but we can also be curious about what someone else's perspective is. Right. Mm, so I yeah. can say, so, so Mrs. Killer B, why is it that you, whatever. Right. And so, and, and sure. we can talk about the why question if you want, but when we ask questions in a curious manner about other people's point of view or perspective, not only do we learn something because we don't have their perspective, but yeah. we also, uh, that's, that's the chance to build connection. Right. That's the mm-hmm. chance to build relationship is to start to understand the other person. So help me understand why you see it that way or, or how it is that you see it. And, yeah. and so you said something about, uh, you, you know, I, Mr. Killerby, I thought you're supposed to be the lead host, but she's asking all the good questions. She's asking all the good questions. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's so, what I said. I'm but, practicing. I've been practicing for th- years. There she's you like go. So, <laughs> so, um, she's you always know, asking, the, why do you want to buy that? Why do you want to eat that? <laughs> oh, that's a whole, I'm staying out of that. Yeah, that's wise. that's wise. That's right. Why do you want wise. me to sleep on the couch? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm definitely staying out of that. Uh, and now I, after all that, I lost what I was going to say. Um, but, but the reality is that it, when we, choose to be curious when we choose to think about the fact that there's something else that there could be for us to see for us to learn for us to understand when we you know there's a zen and i am not a zen buddhist far from Mm -hmm. it but there's a zen phrase and i won't get it exactly right but i'll be close that i absolutely love which is that for the expert there are few options for the beginner there are many Yes, I love that. Remain a beginner. So the idea of being curious is about remaining a beginner, right? Yes, Mm, that's so good. Love that. So that's the C in chair. Be curious. If we want to ask better questions, we want to make questions our superpower. We've got to be curious. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Love that. It's good. The the H in chair is that we have to be humble. Mm. So back to this expert and beginner thing, right? So Mm -hmm. um, if it, it. so speaking to you as a, any of us as a leader, whether that's positionally or not, if we think we're supposed to have the answers, um, then we, we won't want to be curious. We'll try to hide that and, and we won't um, necessarily be humble. The reality is that when we're humble, we have a much better chance of asking better questions because um, we want to know. And, yeah. and and here's the other thing that's really important is that we can ask questions of people even when we know an answer, not mm-hmm. to test them. I mean, mm-hmm. you all were asked a question in school by a teacher that was like a weapon, mm-hmm. right? That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is using a question to draw them out, mm-hmm. right? To, to understand what they're thinking uh, and saying, yeah, maybe I have an answer, but I, I'm not going to. I really want to know what you think. Mm -hmm. And so being humble, I think is an incredible part of of this piece, not, and not just as leaders, um, but Mm -hmm. it certainly applies as a leader. That's good. Good. CH, right. That means CHA would be next. Right. Um, And I, I, the A stands for awareness to just be aware, right. Mm -hmm. To be aware that, uh, and, and by the way, my hand is down here. I took my hand off of the, I had to scratch the back of my head and I took my hand off of the, my little controller deal. Uh, so um, <laughs> I was, uh, th- thank you, my voice. I was aware <laughs> that I'm suddenly not doing what I'm supposed to do, which is keep my hand on this thing. Um, so, but awareness is, is important for us in so many parts of our lives. And so awareness that questions are powerful. Awareness that questions 
are useful. Mm. Oh, awareness that we don't have all the answers. Yes, uh, awareness that it's a skill we can get better at. We could go right on down the line. And maybe mm. when we finish chair, we can talk about some ways to make our questions better themselves, like like some mm. strategies around that, mm. right? So, mm-hmm. uh, so that's the awareness piece. Like, here's the thing. Anything in our lives, if we're not aware that it's powerful, we won't take advantage of the power. Mm. Yes. Mm, right. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Like if I'm not aware that my car has the ability to go X miles an hour, I won't try. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's not just about questions. It's about everything. Awareness is such an empower- important piece. Yeah. That really speaks to our potential in all sorts of areas. You know, if we don't um, take the time to learn and grow and look at what we're, you know, what we're gifted in, if we don't become aware of those things, we can never walk those things out. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And For I think sure. the, I guess the awareness even can get us to the point to learn to be humble too. Like, like mm. the, the, the okay well, of being humble. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I think if we are truly aware uh, and, and know how many blind spots we have and know how much fa- fallibility we all have as humans, it yeah. would be pretty hard for us not yes. um, to be more sure. humble. I think that's fair that's true. to say. Yeah. Certainly true. it's true Definitely. for me. Yes, so, I agree, hundred okay. percent. So what's I? Got I? Some hands raised. I'm so curious. I got to some know. hands raised. Should, should we bring yeah. up some questions? Yeah, let's do that. I'm, oh, okay. I'm tired. Okay. Right, I don't cool. want to lecture. All right, all right so let's, let's, bring, let's, let's get some. Okay. Let's bring let's that bring, mic down. Let's bring that mic down. Let's bring. <laughs> I see Meta Voice has got his hand up. His hands getting tired. Okay. <laughs> How did you Meta know Voice, the mic came come down? Because we went through training. Because we went through training. I have, I have a question. I have a question too, but I, I'll wait. For right, <laughs> my hands. Hey, man. Okay. Do you ever get burnt out on curiosity? I am a curiosity addict. I don't know. That just sounds like a funny <laughs> thing to say. Um, no, I don't. I, I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't think. I, no one's ever asked me that question. Good question. Get burnt was... out. On I'm here. Curiosity? No, I don't think so. I, I can't think of a. You know. I mean. So. You know. Do can we get other people burnt out? Right. Oh. In other words, back to the ch- the kids asking the why question. Like <laughs> if you're a parent of a kid who's been through that stage, yes. you've been burnt out by their <laughs> curiosity. Right. Why, yeah. why, 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 why That's don't you Google stop asking it. why? Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So and may I say, you know, I love learning about new things. I really do. And I'm curious about everything. But like when people are curious in things you're not curious about, you know, um, I mean, let's just take Mr. Killer B as a example. When he was getting into the metaverse, talked about it all the time. I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to talk about it. And so, yes, you can wear someone else out, even if you're not burnt out yourself. But look, here I am. Look, I got curious. Here you are, hat and all. (laughs) So um, so, so I, I don't know that I've ever gotten burnt out, but I do think that we have to be aware of Mm -hmm. how it's impacting others Mm -hmm. and uh, i I think that there's a number of things that are like sometimes enough or enough for now but it's also the way we ask the question so let me just talk about the why question what Mm -hmm. i call the naked why which is the asking the why question without anything else to go with it right Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. that's the question that we asked as kids um Mm -hmm. and as an adult um when when we hear that question it can be off-putting, right? Mm -hmm. Someone asks you why and you hear your mom's voice or your dad's voice and you uh, are, are put back by that. You're put off by that. And Mm -hmm. so uh, I I love the why question, but I I like to ask questions that get there without running the risk of having, um, having people feel like um, they're being judged. So oh, yeah. things like, so tell me more about that or help me understand or what led you to that conclusion or um, mm-hmm. what were you thinking during that time uh, rather than saying, why did you do that? Like if sure, I right. say to you, Meta Voice, why did you do that? You might be like, whoa, right? And then we don't right. want, we're not after that. That's not what we're after. So sure. I don't know if I answered your question, but I answered like four others. <laughs> I was just about to say, not only did you answer mine, you answered someone else's that didn't even know they had a question. There you and go. That's what I'm there you go. About. 
All right. Thank you, Kevin, the curiosity Ollie. I really <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Madam Member. Everyone likes you and share. Killer B now. See you later. Okay. Yes, thank you, Madam Boys. Yeah, you guys, we're going to keep going, but remember, sure, if you guys have a question go or a thought, go click on that QA button and we'll bring you up. Uh, all right, so let's, while we're waiting for some other people, let's go ahead and go into, we're on I, right? Yeah, we're on I of so, chair. Right. So, Which what is, is a the very C? humble letter, right? Very humble what letter is, I. I. Yeah. <laughs> what is the C? Oh, the C is curiosity. curiosity. Well, and what is the H? Humble. Humility. Oh, humble. All right. And what is like, the A? Awareness. All right. Give you aware. So the H I is, is inclus- inclusivity. 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 And in, in, in now this, this really is in the context of, of leading, right? So um, we want to make sure we're asking questions broadly and not just of a person. Well, that's valuable as that might be for me to ask one person, but for me to ask broadly, for me to uh, make sure that I'm getting multiple perspectives. If, if questions are a superpower, then I need to have lots of input, mm-hmm. right? I need to get information from lots of places, from lots of people, not only from the learning perspective, but also from the perspective of of uh, the building those relationships. And so from a leadership perspective, uh, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm talking to everybody on the team and everyone's getting the chance to share their uh, That's good. thoughts. That's really good. I can good. see how the different um, aspects, you know, of chair um, work together too, because, you know, at, as a person who's worked in a big team before, I could see how leaders sometimes would just gravitate towards certain people for, for answers. And then, other people were left out. And so, you know, by a leader staying humble, then they would realize that they could get input from people who they think they don't have anything to learn from. But then, you know, on both sides of that coin myself, you know, sometimes you do get answers from someone who you never thought you would, you know, valuable Mm -hmm. information you never thought you would from that person. And yeah, we make all sorts of assumptions in our lives, don't we? About Mm -hmm. what people might know or might not know. And that's, that takes us back to both curious and humble for sure. Yeah, Good. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So since you work with leaders, we got another question we're going to bring up here before we go to. Okay. I, I mean, R I'm trying to make sure I know how to spell chair. Uh, <laughs> there before you we go. get to R. Yeah. So All right. uh, I would like, since you work with leaders, um, I, I'm curious, <clears throat> have you, have you ran into leaders that are, um, that are afraid to ask, to let people ask questions? Well, let's just ask everybody that's out there. Give me some confetti. If you feel like you've got a question, you, excuse me, if you feel like you've met a leader that was afraid of questions, anybody? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Some. Yeah. Yeah. Not that many, which is good, wow. really. I, I don't think there's any doubt that that's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, afraid, afraid to be asked questions because they won't have the answers afraid to be asked questions because they don't want to be um, exposed uh, mm-hmm. all sorts of reasons. I think. Wow. Yeah, that's, for sure. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Whether that's right. fair or not. Right. Because, you know, so many people yeah. deal with imposter syndrome when yeah. they might be yes. perfectly capable, but just not sure about themselves. Yeah. I could see that. 100%. 100% true. That's good. Chill. Chill. Life, got a question. Chill life. Come on up. Come on, uh, come on up. up to the mic here. Hey. You can jump up right here, right here and down the, the white carpet there. There you go. Hey, thanks for joining us, Chill. No worries. Uh, got an interesting question. Um, I find, as you know, in offices, you have politics, and um, I mm-hmm. find a scenario where, um, I mean, I think I ask good questions, but I found that uh, there's a few people who are trying to make a scenario where I wouldn't be able to ask questions. So mm. um, they're basically trying to make me not ask questions because um, I know I'll maybe raise a good point and. Um, you know, with career progression and politics. So how would sure. you recommend to handle that kind of scenario? Well, uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, you know, you're framing politics as a negative, which they certainly can be, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I think it's useful to realize that politics, if you will, uh, is just a, is a natural state of affairs when you put people together, right? They don't have to necessarily be negative, but clearly chilled life. What you're saying is that it, it feels like there's, there's pressure, there's issues and you feel stifled or whatever. So I, I certainly want to acknowledge that. So here's what I would say. The first thing is you might have to pick your spots about when to ask. 
uh, you want to check your intention as to why you're asking. So back to what I said to Mrs. Mm -hmm. Killer B earlier um, is make sure that your reasons aren't misunderstood. Your, your reasons for asking aren't misunderstood because one of the reasons people might be uh, trying to keep you from asking or trying to move on past. Sometimes people are wanting to move on past in a meeting simply because we're running out of time. Right. And they're just trying to facilitate the meeting. So sometimes we misunderstand that action from them. So that's worth considering. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think the bigger one is um, think about uh, there's a time and a place for the questions and maybe it's in this meeting and maybe it's separate from the meeting and maybe uh, it's a situation where uh, you can ask in a one-on-one -on -one rather than a one-to-many. So I think think carefully and clearly about your intention, make sure that that's clear and don't necessarily as assume, excuse me, that the behaviors you're seeing from others are necessarily trying to um, keep you from asking, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. That's good. That's good. All right. R. Good on question. R. Really good question. Very good okay. question. That's a great so, question. And I'm not sure I answered it completely, but uh, hopefully it's helpful at least a little bit. Um, so. <laughs> cool. Um, R may be my favorite. Mm. Mm. Um, R is for reflection. <laughs> so why are we laughing <laughs> reflection is a big topic of ours here so i oh, i would love to hear what you it. have to say about it you, okay cool so um uh raise your hands if you've if you know like there's two kinds of people in the world right there's someone who's has 10 years of experience and people that have one year of experience 10 times Anybody know the difference between <laughs> ever seen the difference between those two things? Right? I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, there, so yeah. if we have 10 years of experience, we've reflected. If we have one year of experience 10 times, there's no reflection going on. We're just we're just running oh. it back again. We're just running it back again. Uh okay. so reflection to me is one of the most powerful um pieces of learning because um the most powerful learning is discovery learning. The things that the, you know, you've all had the aha moment, right? Like mm -hmm. the aha moment, the light bulb moment, call it whatever you want to call it. And, sure. and often those come from us looking at what we experienced and thinking about it in new ways. So to reflect is to simply say, how did that go? Did it work? Did it not work? What could I do? What, what do I want to repeat? What do I not mm -hmm. want to repeat? And, and so we look at something specific and then we can take it and generalize it for the next time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just as simple as um, – it's not just as simple as uh, here's what I would do in this particular situation the next time, but what sure. I might do more generally in those kinds of situations in, when I sense that pattern again uh, the next time around. So we can we can certainly want to think about reflecting for ourselves, mm -hmm. and we can certainly use reflection with our – teams. Uh, so when we, when we finish a project or when we're with a client and we finish a project, um, I I'm always uh, of the opinion that we should do in the, in the military, the U S military, they call that an, an after action review. Oh, uh, yeah. we call it a learning look back like, okay, cool. what happened? Um, what can we learn from that? What do we want to repeat? What do we not want to repeat? What would we do different? Knowing what we know now, what would we do differently the next time? So there's mm -hmm. all of those kinds of questions. And so uh, asking reflective questions of ourselves and of ourselves, right? Of, amongst ourselves sure. is one mm -hmm. of the most powerful things that we can do it really is a superpower. And, um, and the beautiful thing about it for ourselves is it doesn't necessarily have to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Like if you're at work, you work, you you walk out of them. Let's say you actually work in the office or in a, in a you know, face to face situation, and you uh, you leave a meeting and you're walking, and you can ask yourself three or four reflective questions as you're going to the next meeting or as you're walking back to your desk. Right? Mm -hmm. You can uh, on your commute home, you can say, "So what worked today, or what didn't?" And it it it's instead of picking up our phones. And scrolling, sure. uh, we can use reflective questions as a powerful way to help us learn, stay connected to ourselves, become more aware. Because mm -hmm. I mean, we can take it back to all four of the other pieces of the chair, right? Yeah, I love reflection. That. 
Do you personally um, set aside time like throughout the year to have reflection time to like think about the, you know, like the trajectory of your business or your life or your health? Like, do you, is that a personal practice of yours? So I work really hard to reflect every day, number one. So, Mm -hmm. you know, in, in those spaces and in those times, um, sometimes it's in the evening, sometimes it's in the mornings, usually it's both. Um, But yes, in in the rhythm of my life and in our business, there are certainly, you know, we do things on a, we do things quarterly, we do things annually. Um, um, I, I, I don't always succeed, but I love to spend part of New Year's Eve day doing that for myself oh, as how well. Beautiful. So, mm-hmm. yeah. wow. That's awesome. I, like that. I love that. that. I love, I love our, well, everybody, you guys know me. I, I, I spend a lot of time doing reflection. Usually I usually, you know, every Friday I'll spend two or four hours going out and reflecting on things happening in the team and, and processing. And, and some of that time we'll be praying and trying to just seek out like, what is the right step? What aligns with our goals? What purpose we're, what direction we're heading? Uh, and Absolutely. That's why Mrs. Killer B thought it was interesting you brought that up because yeah. I just got back from a weekend getaway of reflection because there's some big decisions that we were looking at. And she said, I think you should, I think it was a way for her to get me out of the house. But no. she said, I think you should go. Likely. I know it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Well, I'm there can be more than one reason, right? <laughs> yeah. More than yeah. one possible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so, like for him to be home. So that wasn't it. Yeah, no, yeah I'll give her a hard time. No, but yes, she was like, I think you need to go somewhere and spend time reflecting and spend time with God and processing this stuff. I'm like, I didn't want to do it because I was like, I, I like, you know, going away for a couple of nights felt different, but I was like, I knew it, it was something that was needed. And it's, we need to, we need to, you know, we don't have to be Aaron Rodgers, the football player that went into a dark room for three days. You don't have to do that. You don't have to necessarily <laughs> go away, although yeah, you can, yeah, you certainly yeah, can. Yeah. But there's two other, one of the things you said was processing um, mm-hmm. is a part of that. And the other thing is some people might say, well, to journal or not to journal, do I need to have a, do I need to be writing this stuff down? And sure. and, and I think that's a yes. And you, you certainly, you yeah. can, yeah. um, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you another story real quick. Um, when one of my early, my, my first book that was with a major publisher, which is called remarkable leadership, um, hence the word remarkable and so much of what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, uh, when that book came out, someone asked me what was the most, what, what, what leadership book had I re- learned the most from? was the question that they asked me, which I thought was a mm-hmm. great question. And I said, mine. And they mm-hmm. and they were sort of taken up like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> you didn't ask what's the best one. You yeah. asked which one did I learn the most from. And the reason I learned the most from it was the work that went into writing it and the reflection uh-huh. of sure. uh, on experiences and on lessons and on situations mm-hmm. uh, and how that was a part of that. So mm, yeah. I think that's true. Absolutely. Can I, I know we've only got like, eight minutes or 12 minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a ton of stuff that we could talk about and people may have questions. I don't know if they do. The mic is going up. Yeah, I can bring the mic back down, but <laughs> if, if, y'all, if you got questions, questions you need that. to go over there and let him bring the mic back down anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> Good, click that I want to, I want to say something yeah. that I've been thinking a lot about. And I actually was, um, I, I'm doing some study around this right now. Um, and that is that, you know, do this confetti. If you've used chat GPT, or oh. Bard or any of them. Oh, okay. Okay, okay cool. Any of I mean, I don't, it doesn't matter which one, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, the only way that those truly become powerful for you is if you really learn how to do prompts. Mm-hmm. And the best prompts are the best questions. Mm. The questions that are, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to, to, to schemas for prompting, right. That include more than just the question, but at the heart of it, it is the questions that we ask in a generative way. It's chat generative, right. Mm -hmm. Programming tool, right. So asking questions. uh, So what I would say is maybe we're making questions have the chance to become an even bigger superpower because Mm -hmm. they can be how we can as humans, harness the these generative ai tools in ways that most mm-hmm. people don't yes. i mean most people that use use sense. those tools like 
uh, they just go in and then they type in a question. It's like say asking someone to marry them when you first meet them. Like they go in cold <laughs> and ask a question when, when really the way it works is best is by a series of questions, a true conversation with the bot mm. that, yeah. uh, and to clarify the questions, to get your intention clear, because when those become clearer and the questions are better, yes, just like with humans, Better questions, mm-hmm. better results. Can yeah. you see uh, learning to use AI in a really effective way um, as a possibility of making us better communicators? I, I 100% believe that. Um, awesome. I 100% believe that. Now, that's not why um, that wasn't my my personal or our business purpose for starting to sure. use it. Yeah. Um, but it's a fabulous outcome. And yeah. as I'm working on a presentation – that I'll be giving in a couple of months, it, that piece, that insight will be a huge part of it because I don't think that wow. really anyone's talking about that. Yeah. Right. It never even occurred way. to me until just now when you were talking about that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty exciting. I'm going to ask you one more question and then I'm going to let you close with a closing thought for us. Okay. Uh, so we talked about, you know, superpowers and stuff. And I, when I think of superpowers, I think of superheroes too. How many people here, like when you think of superpowers, you think of superheroes? Does anybody have a favorite superhero? Yeah, okay, all right. Batman. So we know that superheroes have nemesis, right? They have nemesis or they have some kind of weakness. So if making questions is superpower, is there a kryptonite that we should be aware of? Mm. And that's not a chat GPT question. No, no, no. I think (laughs) I I actually think I'm going to go back to where we started. I, I think fear. Mm. Is the kryptonite. <gasps> if we're afraid to ask, if we're afraid of what people will think if when we ask, then we won't. Mm. So that, that's my uh that's my answer. I love I'm that. sticking to I it. I love that. Fear. Good point. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's a really, really good answer. Really good. All right. So we as we wrap up, Kevin, thank you so much for coming and experiencing this. Uh it's my and, pleasure. You know, I I love that you guys like. Are you guys thankful that he came out? Like you guys want to show oh, yeah. him some confetti? He's, this has been awesome, and uh, <laughs> maybe we'll take a picture afterwards and some vi- a quick video. But as we get ready to go, I would like to ask you if there's one thing that you hope people will take away from today's discussion. What would it be? Well, you've been asking questions your entire life, and some of the skills that we take most for granted are the things that we've always done, right? Mm -hmm. Like you probably never took a class on taking questions of asking questions. You never took a class on how to be a better listener. Uh, And yet skills like those two that we take for granted because we just do them are some of the most powerful things for us to be consciously working on getting better at. So Mm -hmm. I would leave you with um, be intentional about working on asking better questions for the reasons we started with, which were to be a continual learner and to have stronger, better, more trusting relationships. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in to today's podcast episode. If you liked, loved today's episode, go ahead and hit the subscribe button or leave us a review.